Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're going to have a look at setting up a WISE VX0 thin client. So what I'm gonna do is show you the hardware associated with this little machine. And from there, we'll go through the installation procedure. First, I'll introduce it. Then we'll go ahead and look at the preconditions as well as the partition and format portions of the procedure. From there, we'll do some preparation work so that we can have the Windows 98 installer available on the thin client. And we'll go ahead and install Windows 98 and the drivers associated. After that, I'll give you kind of my final thoughts on this and we'll take it to that point. But without further ado, let's go. So here we have the front of the WISE. It has a power button for powering on, as well as several status lights. Also has a microphone in and a sound out. And this is actually the only output for sound, so that's something to keep in mind. And a USB port, which is very convenient for booting up, say, with a CD-ROM drive, or if you're lucky, a thumb drive. More on that in a minute. Turning to the back, we have a power input as well as two PS2 inputs, one for keyboard and one for mouse. We have two USB ports and a network port. We have DVI output, parallel, and serial. And that's pretty much what you get, but it's a pretty respectable number of items. Looking at the back, you'll also notice that things are not particularly well attached despite the screws being in. And that's because the plastics on this particular machine have not aged well. So I guess that's what it is. Taking the cover off of the machine, we can have a look inside and we'll see here that there is a memory module, which I presume is expandable if you were to remove it, though I have not tried it. We also have this disk on module that I have upgraded. This machine came stock with 128 megabytes and I upgraded it to 16 gigabytes. There's also a nice VIA chipset in here and there are a ton of capacitors. What could possibly go wrong, right? Well, so far so good, but that's pretty much what the inside of the WISE VXO looks like. So as always, this procedure is available in my Git repo. A link is in the description. And here's the procedure itself. And we'll go ahead and make this full screen so you can see it. And first of all, we're going to talk about some of the caveats, if you will. The first one being that this procedure has several specific requirements. You're going to need a USB CD-ROM or DVD drive. You will also need the ability to connect the thin client to a wired network. And also going to need the ability to share files from a file host that supports MS-DOS LAN Manager SMB1. And I recently did a video on that, and here's the procedure for it as well. So we can definitely have a look at that. And setting this up actually isn't too bad. It does take a little while to set up the Raspberry Pi, but if you want to go with this direction, it won't take you too long to get set up. You may have another method as well, and that's fine. But that's how I set things up. Now I do recognize there are a lot of prerequisites, and you're welcome to try a thumb drive. If so, I would suggest just swapping out one part of one procedure for another. If you go to my HP T5700 procedure, there are directions on how to use a thumb drive for partition and format, and you can use those instead if you want to do that. Otherwise, you can proceed to the partition of format section of this procedure when the time is right, but go ahead and take care of the other prereqs first, but you can see that there. So with that out of the way, let's talk about preconditions. First of all, you want to make sure you have a DOM with sufficient storage space I recommend at least 512 megabytes or more. I have 16 gigabytes for my system so that I can install other programs as well later. Now we're gonna go ahead and want to download some drivers. First, we're gonna make a folder called drivers in our downloads directory so that we're ready to download the drivers that we need. And with that created, I'll go ahead and download the drivers. This is gonna be a bit of a lightning round. First, we're going to download the chipset drivers, and we can find those from Phil's Computer Lab. Thank you as always, Phil. Appreciate you. Next, we're going to download some network drivers for the Via Ryan 2 card that we have, and I'll go ahead and paste this, 
And what we're going to find, at least for me, when I try to download a file, it doesn't always work. But if I go ahead and copy the link and paste it into another tab, it seems to work. Thank you, Chrome, for all the things you have changed. Anyway, I digress. Moving on, we're going to grab audio drivers, and we want the Via Vinyl drivers for that. And we can go over to our Major Geeks friends and download that. Love this site. They have lots of great drivers available as well. Uh, had some trouble navigating the uh, page in this little reduced format here. Let's go ahead and uh, expand this uh, browser so that we can see things better. Ah, that's better. I must just be getting old and stupid. I'm sure you guys saw exactly where to go. Anyway, that's now downloaded, so we're good to go there, or is in the process of downloading as we go. Perfect. Next up, we're going to grab video drivers for the S3, some sort of Chrome uh, named card that's in this machine. We'll see when we go to install later the exact name. So we can do that. Unichrome, that's what it is. So let's go ahead and right click on that and copy link as well since we're having the same problem. And we can paste that and grab that and download that as well. Great, we're getting there. I'm also going to download DirectX. I don't know if it's completely necessary depending upon what you want to do. I had some problems with hardware acceleration with the video drivers you'll see later. As such, we're going to scroll down here and look for the latest DirectX that supports 98SE, which happens to be the one after that September release, which is the 8 December 2006 release that I'm currently marked on. So I'll go ahead and download that as well. Great. All right, we're almost done downloading, I promise. The last thing you're going to want to download is my Windows 95 MS-DOS LAN Manager disk, and it's a floppy boot disk. And we're actually going to take this and apply it to the boot section of a DVD or really a CD here before too terribly long. So we'll go ahead and download that as well. And with that, I'm pretty sure the downloads are complete for the most part. There may be one a little bit later, but it is what it is. All right. At this point, it's going to be lightning round because as noted above, I was supposed to take each one of these and put them into a special folder. So I'll go ahead and unzip these and rename them via Hyperion to chipset. The LAN will go ahead and unzip that. And once unzipped, I will rename that to network, etc., etc. Next up is the vinyl drivers, which we will unzip and rename to audio. And from there, we can unzip these Win98ME drivers, which are really video drivers. And then we can take that, rename it to video. You get the idea. DirectX, we can just extract the executable and drag that to drivers as well. Okay, lightning round is complete. So now I'm going to use a program called Burnaware Free to create a bootable Windows 98B boot drivers ISO. And perhaps I could just burn this right to a, a disk, but I'm going to create an ISO just for posterity purposes. And what we're going to do is right click in this program and say add files. And then I'm going to pop over to my downloads directory where we have all these lovely drivers, select the folder, files get added, close. Great. Now I'll resize some of these windows. The next thing we're going to do is actually make this disk bootable and adjust some other parameters. So I'm going to go to the settings tab. And on the first tab, you can see there's a boot image file selection. We're going to change that out for the Rhine boot disk that you downloaded from my Git repository. And we'll go to the downloads directory to find it. And there it is. So we'll grab that guy right there. And next, we need to change the way that the disk gets written to be ISO plus Joliet. And then I like to go with level three. So by doing this, all of our 128 and less file names will get written properly. From there, we can go ahead and hit OK. And we are now ready to actually make this ISO. So go ahead and give it a nice name. I'll call it WISE something or other and put it in the downloads directory, WISE ISO. And it'll go ahead and complete. Perfect. So I guess at this point, I could use BurnerWare to burn the ISO, but I'm just going to go ahead and use image burn old habits, and it just so happens to work well for me. But actually first, let's have a peek at it in WinImage just to make sure that it formed properly. And we can see if we go to the drivers folder that we have a long file name for the DirectX file. So yes, indeed it did. Now we're ready for image burn. So at this point, I am going to open image burn. And once we get that open, it's really as simple as saying, write image file to disk. From there, we'll click on that and we'll navigate over to our downloads directory where we have our lovely WISE ISO that we just built. And from there, we can go ahead and burn this and we'll be all set with a nice bootable disk with drivers on it, all ready to install Windows 98 and get things all set up. Great, there it is. 
It says it failed to verify because my drive ejected and did not reinsert, but I know the disk is good, so we're just going to go ahead and exit and move forward. Excellent. So next, we're gonna head over to the machine itself, press delete to enter the BIOS, enter the password of Fireport with capital F, and we're going to arrow down to advanced BIOS features. The key thing is we want the first boot device to be USB CD-ROM or USB zip if you're daring enough to try the thumb drive. And for the second boot device, we want it to be hard disk. And that's really all that we need to tweak in here. If you wanna set the date and time on your machine, that's fine, that's under standard CMOS features. From there, we can go to save and exit and we can go ahead and reboot. At this point, go ahead and plug in the USB CD-ROM or DVD drive to the thin client. Now with the DVD drive connected or CD drive connected, we can boot into what you see here and we're going to select no network, which is option two and run FDisk. So in running FDisk, let's enable large disk support with a Y and let's go ahead and display partition information. You can see I have an old partition on there that I need to get rid of. So let's take care of that by going back to the main screen and hitting three and then hitting one to delete that guy. And that will give us the opportunity to delete it. So we'll press enter and then enter again and then change are you sure to Y and the partition is gone. So now we can go ahead and create a new partition and I'm going to make it a primary partition and we will verify drive integrity as it does. We want the maximum size, so it'll verify again and it'll create it. At this point, we can go ahead and restart again. And once we restart, we're also once again going to want to choose option number two. So press enter on that. And now we can run the format command. We're gonna do a format C colon slash U slash S. And when prompted, we will confirm that indeed we want to format our hard disk and it'll go ahead and crank ahead. Not this fast, I have spud things up, <laughs> of course. Calculating the free space, it'll ask for volume label, and we can just press enter on that. Sorry that that's a little bit cut off there. And then from there, we're all set. So we have a formatted drive C, perfect. So next up, we now need to copy our Windows 98 second edition installer to our file sharing host. So make sure that you have a note of that file sharing host as well after you copy it there. If you used my filepy slash data concept, it'll be easy. So what I'm also going to do now that I'm copying the Windows 98 installer, as you can see, is download the NUSB mass storage device driver for Windows 98. So I'll go ahead and navigate over to my drivers directory or download directory rather, and there it is. And we can drag that to file pi data as well. So there we have it, the Windows 98 installer, as well as the mass storage device installer available on the network share for copying over to the machine. And you can see there that I have performed that copy. So at this point, we can connect our thin client to the network and we can reboot it. And then we'll choose option one from the boot menu and we will boot up on the network, assuming your network is configured properly. So here we go, choosing option one and we'll go ahead and proceed. And it takes a little while, I have sped this up. You will get a write protect failure, just hit F. I think you get to do this four times, maybe three times. And then from there, it's going to ask us for your password, just press enter, nothing to really enter there. So at this point, we're gonna type a nice net use command to get access to our file server, net use z colon file pi data with the slashes. You will get write protect errors because MS DOS land manager is trying to save out this configuration, just fail, fail, fail. You will also get a DOS error 29, that's fine. That's just because I don't have everything copied to the disk. So at this point, you can see I'm on drive Z. I did a directory listing of it. I've made a directory on drive C for Win98 SC installer and we're going to copy it. So we'll go ahead and copy from drive Z to drive C, and you can see my instructions for the syntax or see what we have on the screen here. And this will take a little while, but it will eventually copy all the files to this machine, and we will be ready to perform the installation. Once file copy is complete, we can go ahead and copy the NUSB36E.exe driver to drive C, because we're going to need that as well after we finish the installation. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm typing very carefully because you can see I already got it wrong once. And from there, it's copied. Perfect. Okay.
from there we get to do another reboot and choose option number two because we need to free up some memory for purposes of installing Windows 98 SE. I'll go ahead and change the drive C and change into the Win98 SE folder and we'll type setup and scan disk will run. We can press enter and then scan disk will run. So from there it'll do its thing. It'll actually take a while. Uh, I went ahead and sped that up so you didn't have to wait for it. And from there we will see the Windows 98 setup page load. Go ahead and accept the agreement and type in your product key. And then from there choose the default installation directory. So next. It will go ahead and prepare the directory and check for installed components. You can do a typical install, put in your name, and then click on next, and then next again for common components, and location, and start copying files. From here, go ahead, take a break, get a cup of coffee, have a full course meal, and sometime later, installation will finish, at least the first part. Then the second part will kick in after a slight reboot, and we have the opportunity to provide our computer name and workgroup name. So I'll go ahead and just give this a name here of WISE and a default workgroup of workgroup. And from there, it will then go ahead and proceed some more before asking us some information about our time zone. So go ahead and put in your time zone. I'm in the Eastern time zone, so I put that in. I'll hit apply and then close. I don't know why I didn't just press close, but that is what it is. And then from there, it'll proceed to do a couple of other configuration items. And when it's complete, we'll prompt for restart. And upon restart, you can put in your username with no password or choose a password if you'd like. And then we're greeted with the Windows 98 startup screen. Perfect. Now it's time to go ahead and proceed and install some drivers. So we'll proceed with that. I'm gonna turn off the splash screen though, so it doesn't show on startup. Great, so to do the drivers, what we need to do first is install those mass storage drivers, that NUSB 36E. So double click on that and then yes, it will copy itself over and install what it needs to install and you will be prompted to restart. This will be the first of many. All right, all restarted again. Now, if I go ahead and right click on my computer after I close this window here, we'll go up to my computer, right click and say properties. We want to go over to device manager and find the PCI universal serial bus and double click on it reinstall driver and then automatic search. So we'll go ahead and choose next and it will go ahead and rebuild the driver information database. And from there it will find our via USB controller. So click finish and now we can click close. And then again, it will continue to find some things, but we are now in a position where we can plug in the USB CD-ROM drive and it will get detected as a mass storage device. Great, and a CD-ROM drive in my case so from here, I can go up to my computer and I should have a drive D and there it is. So what we're gonna do is copy these drivers to the desktop so that we can go ahead and install the rest of the drivers to the system. And that'll take just a few minutes. Once again, I have sped this up for your viewing convenience. Perfect. So now we can go down the list. And the first thing we're going to start with is the audio drivers because they've been pesky in the past. So let's go ahead and double click on that drivers folder. And once we do that, we can go ahead and navigate to audio, vinyl, and then go down and find the nice setup program here. And this will run its courses. I said it's been pesky in the past, it's fine. Just make sure your Windows directory is Windows and not something else. Otherwise the installer gets very confused as I discovered. Anyway, this will go ahead and scan the hardware. You can press next when you get to this point. And then from there you can choose I agree and click next. And then from there, next again. And then from there, next again. And finally, the thing's going to install. So now it's installed. Now you can hit next and it's going to ask you to reboot. Absolutely, you must oblige. So go ahead and reboot. So next up, we're going to install network drivers. So I'll navigate over to the network folder, then LAN, then via 823X. I know that's confusing since there's so many folders there. And we're going to scroll down and look for the win setup program. So go ahead and run that. It'll go ahead and install the network adapter and it'll say restart. Of course. So you know what to do. Click yes. And before long, you'll be restarted again. All right, great. So now that we're restarted again, we can go ahead and install the DirectX. So I'll click yes on that. 
and specify a temp directory of DX temp. And from there, we'll just go ahead and click OK. And it will extract quickly. And from there, we can go ahead and navigate over to that folder. So I'll go to my computer. I'm kind of doing this the stupid way, but oh well. DX temp. Scroll down and find where that is. DX setup. And we can run that. Click I accept the agreement. And then next. And then next again. And then wait for a minute or two and it will be installed. And you guessed it. Finish to restart. So now that we're restarted, let's go back to the drivers folder and go over to the video directory. And let's go ahead and find VGA and Win98 ME. It's actually Windows 98 and Windows ME, hence the name. Find the setup executable, double click on it. From here, this will launch and install the VIA S3G Unichrome. So next, next. And this one's actually pretty quick, like 30 seconds or so. So you'll certainly appreciate that. From there, we can restart yet again. All right, great. So now look at this nice higher resolution that we have. That's awesome. Let's go ahead down to properties and let's fix one thing related to hardware acceleration. So I'm going to go over to settings and I'm going to go over to advanced and I'm going to bump down the hardware acceleration under performance. This is because I've had problems running things like the screen savers that are associated with Windows 98. So bumping that down will solve that problem. We can click close and you guessed it. Time to restart. So now that we're restarted, we'll go to the drivers folder and then go to chipset and to the via Hyperion Pro directory you see here and look for the setup folder. So we scroll down. There it is. Great. We can double click on that. Now this installation is actually going to error out, but it's OK. Click next and then click I agree and then click next again. Then go ahead and click next again and then next again. It will install, it will come up and say there's an error, as you can see here, but it did something. It's okay. It actually doesn't make a difference. When you reboot, you may get a couple of devices that are detected, but if we go over to, say, Device Manager, we're going to see we don't have any yellow exclamation points now. So I think we've been successful in installing all the drivers. And I have done a reboot. I won't demonstrate it here, but if you do, you will be fine. Let's go ahead and change the screensaver so we can see something nice and interesting up on the screen here with nice rendering and resolution and speed. And there it is. This is a very capable machine. OK, well, that's the 98SE installation procedure on the Wise VX0 Thin Client. Now I'm going to give you my thoughts on this particular machine. First of all, from a hardware perspective, as noted, the plastics have not aged well. It's not that big of a deal, but there's no question that this machine is being held together by its base. Without that, the case would not be attached to the machine. So keep that in mind. Not a big deal. As you can see, the machine is together, but it's something worth noting. Second of all, this machine has a very buggy BIOS. If we head over to the parkytowers.me website, you can read more about it. But basically, this machine has issues booting from USB thumb drives and other USB issues, as you can see here. I won't go into detail. You can certainly read up on it for your particular use case, but it's just something to be aware of. As long as you can get Windows 98 SE installed, you will be fine. But if you try to do other things with this machine, I just wanted you to be aware of that. Third, I will say that this machine does not start up consistently. There may be a problem with my particular model or unit, but I have been having some problems, and that's something to be aware of. Again, it may be localized to this system, but keep that in mind if you go to acquire one of these. So those are kind of my thoughts on this particular machine. Okay, well, that's what I had for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, quite frankly, I'm very excited about the possibility of using thin clients like this to accomplish retro workflows because, well, the cost is particularly good, especially for this one. I've seen cases where four of these machines sells online for $60, and that's just phenomenal. So if you're willing to put up with the bugs for this particular machine, you can get one. If you don't want bugs, buy an HP T5700 or 5300 like you saw in my previous videos. Those seem to be rock solid, plus they give you DOS support as well. Definitely subscribe to the channel. There is more content on the way. 
Ring the notification bell if you want to be notified when new videos are posted. If you like what you saw, please do give us a thumbs up. If not, definitely consider sending me a strong message by pressing that thumbs down button twice. As always, it's been great having you along for the journey, and I can't wait to see you till next time. But until then, bye for now.